Hello, dear viewer. Welcome to Hope English Sabbath School. It is a place where we, we come together to study the Word of God. And remember, this quarter we've been talking about the book of Mark. And, and through that, we've been learning a lot about Jesus Christ, how he, he, he called his disciples and how he taught them. And um, last week and last two weeks, we looked at how Jesus started teaching his disciples, trying to tell them the things that was going to happen to him and the things that they also need to go through if they really want to be his disciples. In fact, um, we are learning a lot on the book of Mark concerning Jesus' life here on earth. And um, today, to we want to continue with, with that. And today, we are going to look at um, controversies in Jerusalem. Now, remember that Jesus and his disciples have gotten to Jerusalem, and there were some controversies in there, and that is what we're going to look at today. Um, to help me to do this wonderful discussion, I have um, Dr. Freeman here with me. Dr. Freeman, um, you're welcome, my brother. Thank you so much, Pastor. Yes, um, Thank you. He's, he's a regular member on, on, this, on this show. And we want to thank God for his life. He, he worships at um, Second D, right? No, or West, Takrad Westridge. Westridge, yes. yes. Takrad yes. Central. Takrad Central. Thank you. And so greetings to all the members over there. Thank you. Next to Dr. Freeman is my dear sister, Counselor Mrs. Perfect Odru. Um, she's not uh, a new person. We, 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 she's a, a, a regular panel on, on, this, on this show. My dear sister, you're welcome. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I hope the family is fine. <laughs> By God's grace, uh -huh. you are fine. <laughs> yeah, we thank God. And uh, I think um, you'd, I want to greet some individuals, take this opportunity to, to say hi to them. I'll come back to you, Dr. Freeman. Yes. Thank you. I'd like to say hello to Madam Cecilia Banz, the mother of the Holman uh, brothers, <laughs> Dr. Kwekumensa Holman and Elder Holman of Legon SDA Church. Upon AJ, she's a member of Smart Adventist um, Women on Facebook. She watches a lot and always been leaving comments on our Facebook platform. I'd like to say hello to you. Continue watching us. And Madam Martha Jumo of Otafo, then Mr. Joseph Anoche. Otafo, for then Principal Daniel okay. Atatu. For mostly, we call him Ofata. SDA okay. um, Nursing okay. Training College. Thank you. Okay. All right, next to Councillor Perfect is Pastor Kwabena Lewas, my dear brother and my co host for this wonderful program. Also, for you, welcome. Thank you so much, yeah. Pastor. How is the family? By the grace of God, the family is doing so good and mm. doing so well. And I praise God for that. Auntie Sarah Opoku from Eputuja Kumasi. And uh, Mr. James Opon, a.k.a. Mayeshi, a man from church in All Kumasi. Right. God bless you. And Pastor Abbott in Southeast Church, right. London. God bless you for All listening. Right. Thank you very much, Pastor Lewis. Pastor, uh, um, um, Dr. Freeman, at least one or two people. All right. My yeah. warmest um, greetings to my family at the Asana Sempani SD Church, my district at Asimbreko District, and my lovely family at the Takwadi Central District, presently at Westridge. I say a wonderful greetings to everyone. I mean, right. bless each one of you. All right. Then, Doc, pray with us. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you so much for a moment like this. We thank you for the gift of our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to be under your feet to study all the time. As we're about to open scriptures and share your word to our dear viewers and listeners, let your glory look at us and let them hear your voice, not our filthy voices. We thank you, O Lord, for an answered prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Um, the topic we're looking at today is Jerusalem controversies. And the key test or the memory test is taken from Mark 11, verse 25. Mark chapter 11, verse 25. And it goes like this. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Amen. 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 Whenever you stand praying, remember this. If you have anything against anybody, 
forgive that individual. Um, Councillor Perfect, the only woman amongst us. Mm -hmm. What was Jesus trying to tell his disciples? Um, forgiveness is key in worshipping God. Mm. So before you can access the throne of God, you must learn to forgive um, others too. When they went to Jesus Christ to ask them, teach us how to pray, he told them that forgive our sins as we forgive others who sins against us. So before you access God, try to forgive each uh, people also who, who have sinned against you. Um, the sins, forgive them, then you can access the forgiveness from God also. It's a key point as a Christian. So you must always learn to forgive so that we can be in tune with our Father in heaven. Mm, good. Um, prayer and forgiveness. Pastor Lewis. Yes. If you look at the memory tests, uh, it is so very clear because prayer is communicating with God, mm -hmm. talking to God and receiving uh, feedback just as you communicators would term it. So that is what prayer is like. And so if you have anything against somebody and you are going to your friend who is a friend to that person you have a problem with, I don't think that person will be happy mm -hmm. to listen or to hear. Uh, what you have to offer him. That's why God simply put it that if you have a problem with your neighbor, with your brother, with your sister, please go and settle it because that person you have problem with is somebody I love, is somebody who is dear to me. And so, so long as you are dear to me and the person is dear to me, don't let any rift come between you before you come to me. And as I forgive you your sins, I know that uh, you can also forgive others. So as followers of God, we need to do all we can to forgive because forgiveness is paramount in this world. And that one important thing is that when you forgive, you free yourself from prison, not the person you forgive. So forgiveness is something we cannot joke with. Forgive that person and you will see how healthy and how blessed your life will be. And that's the point Christ wants to make to tell us as disciples. Dr. Freeman, as yes. followers of Jesus Christ, yes. from the key test, you can see that Christ was uh, um, teaching his disciples to learn how to forgive. Yeah. And so he tells them that even when you are praying and you remember that you have something against a, a brother, yeah. go and forgive that individual. What is that to us in these last days? This is very important for us in our time where we cannot continue to bore iniquities of others in our hearts and even vice versa. The teachings of Jesus Christ uh, throughout the whole book of Mark has been very practical and exper experiential, very, very uh, particular to our settings and our daily lifestyle. The Bible makes it very clear to us that if you want to see forgiveness from our maker, then you have to forgive each other's sins and iniquities. By so doing, we get the opportunity to get closer to God more. The worrying trend in our current generation is that if you have a problem with your brother, now it doesn't even go one-on-one, -on -one. it transcends to the, the next person mm -hmm. who is closer to you. Yes. Because if I have an issue with your uh, closest enemy in court, and I happen to be your friend, automatically I turn out to also have similar uh, issue with other person, which is very dangerous. So the lesson is, or the key test is giving us a firm assurance to be able to forgive each other's sin. So our Lord himself to forgive us our iniquities. No need to harbor iniquities in your heart. Mm. No need to harbor any iniquity in your heart as a Christian and as a child of God. Pastor Luas, yes, sir. this time Jesus calls his disciples mm -hmm. and they want to enter into Jerusalem. Yeah. You know, Jerusalem was the, the, the main city for the Israelites. Yeah. They had the biggest temple over there. And at every Passover, they would all come around and celebrate together. Yeah. Jesus was going there too with his disciples. And something happened. And uh, when you read from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to, um, to 11, it mm -hmm. talks about Jesus 
sending his disciples to go pick a donkey for him and the rest. Yeah. What was Jesus trying to communicate here? All right. Uh, what we see in uh, Mark chapter 11, I want us to read a, a little of that. Uh, Jesus, and his disciples, Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem. They came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As soon as you enter it, you will see a young donkey. And there that no one has ever ridden, untie it and bring it here. Mm -hmm. If anyone asks, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Just say, the Lord needs it and uh, will return it soon. This is something that is so marvelous. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus didn't send the disciples to go and steal the coat. No. But he sent them because he has a purpose. Jesus knew that there was a coat at Bethphage and that he could use. Why did he do that? He knew how to answer its owners so that his disciples could take it away. And he knew that by imitating Solomon at his coronation, if you re we remember mm -hmm. Solomon's coronation, he was fulfilling what Zechariah has written concerning the Messianic prophecy that we find in 1 Kings chapter 1, 33, 34. I wish we could read that. Uh, until, uh, uh, First Kings chapter 1, 1 Kings. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter 1, 33, 34. So we can understand why Jesus Christ sent for the coat at a time when he was 33. triumphantly entering Jerusalem. Okay. Yes. First Kings chapter 1, verse 33. And then uh, uh, perfect to read Zechariah 9, 9, the prophecy regarding the Messianic entry into Jerusalem. The yes. king said to them, take with you mm -hmm. the, the servant of your Lord and have my son Solomon ride on my own mole. Good. And bring him down to Gihon. Mm -hmm. Let Zadok, the priest, and Nathan, the prophet, anoint him there as king over Israel, and blow the trumpet and say, Long live King Solomon. Amen. 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 In Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Zechariah okay, 9, 9, yes. Rejoice, Rejoice, greatly, O great. daughter of Zion. Mm -hmm. Shout in triumph. O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a corpse, mm -hmm. the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem, Good. and the bow of war will be cut off. Mm -hmm. And he will speak peace to the nations. Yeah. Yeah. And his dominion will be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Amen. 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 In last two weeks, um, Elder made a comment that um, Christ was living a scripted life. Sure. And so this is what Jesus Christ was doing to fulfill the righteousness of, of this prophecy, mm -hmm. that he is the Messiah. When we read from 1 Kings, we realize that it was the same trend that Solomon was crowned during his coronation to be a king of Israel. And so if Jesus Christ is going to be the king of the Jews, king of Jerusalem, Israel, then he has to do the same. Mm. And so the prophecy was fulfilled when Christ did that. But my point is, why didn't the people question Jesus' disciples but allow the two disciples to pick the donkey from there mm -hmm. because Christ had already worked on them. Mm -hmm. And he said, we will return it. Christ will not take something from you and ask you to go free of charge. That's why those who give always have. Because the more you give to God, when God is giving it back to you, he will give it in a state mm -hmm. that is different and unique from what, what he had. And so, in, it is very evident that Jesus planned this exhortation and he wanted the people to recognize him as their king. However, you will realize also that it did not pre precipitate any event. He wanted the people to recognize him as their king. And indeed, he did that. And he walked through the crowd unnoticed. And silently, Jesus entered the temple in Mark chapter 11, verse 11. But then the Roman soldiers did not have any problem to intervene because there wasn't any chaos, no rebellion. But the Jewish leaders were filled with fear. 
they breed a sire when they realized that Jesus Christ had quietly left the temple and had returned to Bethany. Mm. Why? Because he didn't bring any spark that would threaten them. And so now Israel had to decide whether they will accept Jesus Christ as their Messiah or not. Mm. And so today we also present to you, Christ has triumphantly entered into your heart. Mm. Are you going to accept him or you will reject him? Mm. For the Jews, they rejected him. Some accepted him and followed him, but others did not. But I don't want you to be like those who rejected Jesus. Give your life to him. Christ is prepared. He's ready to enter into your heart triumphantly. Open it and he will enter there noticeably, not unnoticed. And so allow yourself and the Lord will bless you so you can have salvation for yourself. Mm. Thank you very much, Pastor. In the book, The Desire of Ages, page 569, Ellen G. White writes, 500 years before the birth of Christ, the prophet Zechariah thus foretold the coming of the king to Israel. This prophecy is now to be fulfilled. He who has so long refused royal honors now come to Jerusalem as the promised heir to David's throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, when he came, rejected uh, or refused royal honors. But this time around, entering into mm -hmm. Jerusalem, um, accepted it to some extent. Yes. Now he's done whatever he's supposed to do. Sure. He was in the temple before they realized he was, he was out. He yeah. was out with, with his disciples. Yeah. And then they retired at Bethany. Bethany. From Bethany, something happened. Mm -hmm. Counselor Perfect, take me through. Jesus from Bethany back to Jerusalem. Mm. He went to sleep. The following day, he was coming to Jerusalem again. In fact, it was like a week something. Yeah. Every morning, he would come to Jerusalem. And then in the evening, he would go back to Bethany to go and sleep. Yeah. This time around, after his triumphant entry to Jerusalem, everything was said and done for the first day. He went back to um, and Bethany. The second day he was coming, he saw a fig tree and so on and so forth. Talk to me about it. Or oh, you want to say yes. something before? Yes. yes. Even at the triumphal entry, yes. there is something symbolic we need to okay. also okay. learn. The, 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 yeah. the humility side of Jesus yes. Christ. And how Mark also projected Christ okay. with the key emphasis of the coming Messiah, Messiah. Right. or the king to be, the mm. king of Israel. Mm. In fact, that gingered the attention of many to ask, who is this man? All right. And Jesus was so humble, like we all shared. In the earlier phase, he never wanted to sh you know, show sure. that he's a, I mean, he's a, he's a, king, a Messiah, more or less even a God or something. Sure. But sure. he was so humble and he entered humbly All right. but the ambience the people around having seen him mm -hmm. considering the great miracles he had done before mm -hmm. having healed a the lot of people, people the, the blind, people, the blind. And so, and yeah. so, so he's coming jesus is coming All right. but he was so humble then having sat on this you know court this humble very young court and it tells a lot of meaning to us as christians okay that when we do great things our works will surely pave way Mm. to where we want to go. Mm. How do you share Christ to other people? How do you enter environment when mm. you have already destroyed the previous opportunities that yeah. you had? Mm. So based on Jesus' experience from the miracles he did, the ministry he was doing, his entry to Jerusalem was awesome and triumphant. Right. And that Thank is you. great evidence or an example that we can also learn. So Jesus and never forced those honors on himself. Not, not at all. Yes. But he earned them. Exactly. The people saw the, the things he had done in the past yes. and decided to shower exactly. those glories and honors exactly. to him. And so now he retired at, um, um, at Bethany. The following day, he's coming to Jerusalem again. Yeah. He's hungry. Yeah. My dear sister, take us to yeah. a cursed tree. <laughs> And a clean temple. Yeah, so after all that happened, and mostly people refer to that as the Palm Sunday, that is sure. laying the clothes and yeah. all that, the Hosiana and yes. all that. So after that incident, he went to Bethany, he was returning, and the Bible says that he was hungry, so he needed fruits. So he went under this tree, the fig tree, mm -hmm. and 
was assuming that looking at the leaves, how it's in, 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 uh, in season and all that, the blossomness of it, mm -hmm. he expected fruit, sure. something to quench his uh, hunger. Mm. But upon searching the tree, there was none of it. Mm. So he cursed the tree. Sure. The lesson I want to draw as, as Christians, we must bear the fruits of the Spirit. Mm. So it's not about the flamboyance that you proclaim to people that you are Christians, but your fruits must show that you are Christian. So if you are in Christ, if you, if you have aligned yourself with Christ, if you are Christian, then you must bear the fruit. The fruit that you are going to bear will signify to others that you are growing in Christ. But if you are not growing, then the Bible says that it's, you, you don't yield any fruit. So it's best that we cut you off and fetch, put you um, to the woods. Mm. So Jesus cursed this tree. And on the other day, when he was returning with the disciples, they found out that they noticed that the fig tree has withered mm. from the roots. So not just the leaves, but from the roots up, it has withered. So if we're Christian, learn to bear fruit. If you don't bear fruit, you are going to be pruned, you are going to be cut, you are going to be thrown into the fire. Then another thing happened. After him cursing the tree, he went to the temple. And when he went to the temple, he realized that... Let us focus on the just, just the fruit. Yeah. And you were talking about the fact that when he was returning, um, they saw the, the, the tree with it yeah. from, from top to the roots. roots yeah. What did Jesus teach his, his disciples right there when... Peter is the one who saw it yeah. and, and called Jesus' attention to it that Jesus, see, the tree that you, you, you cursed is with it. Jesus taught them a lesson which is very, very important to all of us. I don't know if you can share the lesson about faith to us right now. Yeah, so um, I'd like to read something small yes. from the Sabbath school here. Please go ahead. May no one ever eat fruits from you again. Mm. That is the case. Sure. It was a very strange and atypical action for Jesus. But what follows right after becoming even more striking? So that is the day after. Yes. So you must have faith from mm. the lesson. What mm. you are drawing from here is you must have faith for once. And as a Christian, as I said earlier on, we must learn to bear fruit. And the fruit is the spirit that's um, the fruit of the spirit, the kindness, the joy, the long suffering, and the rest that people will see and attest to the fact that you have Christ deep within you. So the disciples saw it and made mention to Jesus that this is what happened. And Jesus, in response, Jesus said, Let no one eat from you again. And the disciples heard it. Hmm. So he affirmed it, and the mm. disciples also knew that what Jesus did, mm -hmm. cursing the tree, has caused that. So you must bear fruit. At the end, if you don't bear fruit, it's either internal damnation or internal salvation for you. All right. So when you read, um, all that we we're talking about is in Mark chapter 11. Yeah. When you read the verse 22, I want to read. And mm -hmm. Jesus answered, saying to them, have faith in God. Yes. Truly I say to you, whoever mm. says to this mountain, remember they were, they were from, from Bethany to Jerusalem, Jerusalem. a mountain, uh, a, a, a area. rocky mm -hmm. area. Good. And so he, he says, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says is going to happen, it will be granted him. Therefore, I say to you, all things for which you pray and ask, believe that you have received them, and they will be granted to you. Mm. Um, it's talking about faith. Jesus yeah. telling the disciples that whatever you ask, if you have faith and you even tell the mountains to move, they will move. And whatever you pray, when, when, whatever you ask in, from God when you pray, believe it and you have it. What was Jesus trying to teach the disciples, Dr. Freeman? Yeah. And then so the, the then impetus of Jesus' statement was yes. centered on faith. All right. Uh, it was very atypical of Jesus to have cursed a tree. I okay. mean, somebody who just did a lot of miracles, mm -hmm. you know, your triumphal entry. Now we came to under a fig tree because it was not producing. There Jesus cursed it and mentioned that it is not going to bear fruit again. Nobody's going to eat. Mm. And 
that day, the every part of this tree were there, Wooded. including the roots. Mm. It was so unusual. Yes. Because even if a tree should die off, it should take some some, some time. Sure. This is telling us how we must ground our faith in Jesus. Okay. Whatever we believe, when we say it will happen, mm. whatever our mind tells us to do in the context of Christ, if we attach faith to it, it will come to realization. Mm. In fact, the fig tree has got symbolic uh, definitions, okay. especially when you read the, uh, Mark eleven thirteen. You know, it leaves what attracted to everybody. Okay. Peter, all the disciples, because this is a huge tree. Sure. From afar, you will see. That is brilliant. But it was not good for food. So if you think <laughs> you are, in quote, an elder, you are a pastor, you are, uh, you know, a Christian, a Christian in, general. in general, you are whatever, mm -hmm. people will see it. But when they get closer to you, what do they see? Okay. Mm. If, when they get closer and they are not able to see the fruit you are supposed to exhibit or bear, <laughs> in fact, it's so worrying. Mm. So it was the verse 20 in Mark 11 that Jesus finally rejected such a tree. Mm. And this is so worrying as Christians. People will see us as worshipping on Sabbath, on Sunday, you are going to church, you are doing everything church as a Christian that you cannot bear good food. You are good for nothing. Mm. And this is something that we are not supposed to be called by Christ. Mm. Jesus once said that, by their fruit, you yes, shall know them. them. And so without food, uh, it's difficult for us to even describe you. And so, um, Pastor Loas, mm -hmm. it was not just the, 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 the fruit. Yeah. Now he cursed the fruit. He, they continued their journey to Jerusalem. Yeah. Now he enters the temple. What happens? Okay. So this is, uh, we are still talking about uh, Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the Jerusalem controversies. Yes, sir. And as they have mentioned, we see the fig tree. It is something that uh, Christ was using to educate or to teach the disciples. Okay. And then the people around who the Israelites truly were. Sure. And so you see this story as a sandwich story yeah, with sure. the bread here and then the bread down. Mm. And in the middle, you have the leaves and then the whatever mm. uh, things that will make it so nice in between. And so in the central part of the sandwich, we see Mark um, he's showing God's purpose for his people. And the story is surrendering the fig tree. And that shows Israel how he acted. The temple was God. This is God's purpose for the temple one. To offer salvation for all people. Mm -hmm. And then number two, it was corrupted by who? The people. And that is why Jesus had to restore it back again. And so Christ had to do that. And the fig tree here is Israel's performance. Its leaves attracted a lot of people, as uh, Professor just said. But then when you get closer to it, you see no good food or nothing good in, on it. So why should you be still alive? to consume nutrients and to enjoy the good environment and everything to blossom with leaves but no fruit. That is something that talks to us directly as Christians. If you are a Christian, you must be able to yield. Don't just be in the church for being their sake. And it was rejected by Jesus Christ. Christ didn't like that. So in summary of the day three, what happened over there was that Christ authority was questioned. Mm. Why did they question it? If you read Mark 11, 27 to the 12 verse 12, you will see the story over there that no one dared to rebuke Jesus Christ when he expelled the merchants mm. in the court, from the court. From the court. However, the next day, they decided to publicly discredit Jesus Christ by calling to question his authority. Mm. And when Christ's authority was questioned, he also had it in mind that Jesus also knew how yeah. to ask. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened. Now, the ball is in his call to answer or to withdraw, whether they accepted or rejected John. And the guys could not answer him. So the debate entered in a tie. After ending the debate in a tie, Christ had to give a knock, hard one. Mm -hmm. He had to fight back. And in fighting back, he was able to bring up Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through to 7. Mm -hmm. 
And that is very important because Isaiah compared Israel to the vineyard from which God expected judgment. And behold, vileness, righteousness, and the here is a cry. There was a very loud cry. So Jesus used the same figure to portray the attitude of the leaders then. And they saw themselves reflected in the parable, but were not willing to rectify their behavior. Could that be said about us, leaders in this world, today could it be said in christianity today could it be said in your family today you need to nobody is uh, is beyond mistakes we are bound in making mistakes when you make mistakes and it's revealed to you it's open to you accept it embrace it and change your behavior and attitude for christ's sake we all need salvation for ourselves don't fight back but humble yourself humility is what will take us home and i know that christ's authority that was questioned and with the answer the approach he used when we use that today we will be able to bring many to the fold of christ jesus all right Amen. and so Amen. jesus's authority being questioned here but he used a very nice strategy to respond to them did they question jesus be his jesus's authority because he sat them from the temple and sucking them from the temple he said the place will be called a place of prayer yeah. for all today mm. a lot of things are happening in most yeah. temples yeah. in most churches counselor perfect yeah. what counsel will you also give to pastors to churches who are also doing same as the time of jesus christ yeah so our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said his temple is supposed to be a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. But when you look around, you should ask yourself, as a Christian, have you turned your church, your place of worship, mm -hmm. where people need to come for comfort, people mm -hmm. need to come as a sanctuary to mm -hmm. pray and ask God for forgiveness and get blessings from God. Are you rather using it as a business venture? Because sometimes people decide not to go to church because of the financial burdens that they can't mm -hmm, afford. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So some people, because of the financial burden you place on them, they are not able to assess the presence of their creator. Mm -hmm. And we know that the temple is a place that we meet God there. Right. We commune with like people, people who believe in God. At the end, we, re we receive blessings and we are able to also share our cares with people mm -hmm. and get solutions. We have men of God that will help us to pray. But if you are rather deterring people away, you are pushing people away because of the activities that you are doing mm -hmm. there. It's not helpful. Mostly because of economic hardship, people are using all sorts of ways to dupe people. But you must know that God is watching. Mm -hmm. As he scattered them, he's going to do the same th thing to you. The reward is going to come and the reward will not be something that you like. And mostly, sometimes too, it's not just business venture. Sometimes our attitude push people away from God. People who are vulnerable, who need to assess God's presence because of our actions, the things mm -hmm. we say, our certain actions, these people decide to stay home. You know that we are not all strong. The Bible admonishing, uh, admonishing us that the weak ones, mm -hmm. we should hold them together. We should guide them. We should be with them. We should instruct them so that they can also be strong. But those weak people in faith, we use our actions to to deter them, to push them away from Christ is not the best. His house is a house of prayer. So if you have turned it into a business venture, making rich from the body of Christ, it's high time you stop. Allow people to have access to their creator and worship him. Thank you very much. And so we should be very careful with, some of, with the things we do in the house of the Lord. If you are a minister, if you are a church member, if you are a Christian or you go into the temple of God and the way you behave, the way the things you do in the temple of God, be very careful and remember that Jesus himself said the temple will be a place for worship and a, a place for prayer. And so if you go into the temple of God to do otherwise, be very careful because Christ is watching. Um, Dr. Freeman. Yes. Another um, tempting question then comes to Jesus again. Still in Jerusalem. Yes. Now, when you read from Mark chapter 12, from verse 13 to 
27, um, particularly from verse 14. They came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are truthful and defer to no one, for you are not partial to any, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to pay a poor tax to hmm. Caesar or not? Shall we pay or shall we not pay? Look at the, the, the <laughs> tempting question they brought to Jesus. Yes. You know, all trying to trap Jesus. Um, what did, how did Jesus react to this? Yes, doctor? that is a very good uh, thing to know as Christians. Uh, in computer science, we call something malicious attack. Okay. <laughs> or malicious quotes. Okay. And these are, you know, or malicious, whatever, like viruses, or anything that is intended with clear attention to steal somebody's mind mm. or to get the opinion and destroy. Mm. So this is a malicious question. Okay. <laughs> uh, thrown to Jesus. And um, Jesus in Mark chapter 12, yes. verse 15 says that, but he perceived their hypocrisy, mm -hmm. said to them, why are you tempting me? You know, the, the key word here to which after, uh, that Jesus read their mind, especially the Sadducees, okay. with their mm -hmm. conscious attempt to okay. trap Jesus uh, on matters relating to uh, paying, you know, taxes, Mm -hmm. or not to pay. Mm -hmm. They wanted to know the opinion of Jesus. You know, they started. Yes. Fr now, from Jerusalem, his triumphal entry, everybody was saying, the king is the king. Mm -hmm. Now, he went ahead to the synagogue, now destroyed everything that they were doing, and then made a clear emphasis that salvation is not open to everybody. Mm -hmm. God's place is supposed to be a place of worship. Mm -hmm. Now, the people were, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. Who is he? What authority does he have to do all these things? Yeah. Now they need to trap him. If he says, yes, you must pay uh, the taxes to the governor, mm -hmm. he will say, why are you not paying mm. to God? Yes. Then if you say to God too, it means you, are, you want to claim the glory uh, to yourself, but not for the community or the environment or the governor mm -hmm. who rules the uh, whole city. Yes, so his answer was you know, particularly selected. Right. And his response in the book of Mark, chapter 12, reading down from 24 to 27, summarizes a significant uh, key areas that the Sabbath school provided. Jesus threw them to the scripture, okay. saying that you are ignorant of the scriptures. Mm. Contrary to what this parable implied, the Bible teaches that our resurrected body will not be the same as the ones now. Mm. Having a clear mind that they will be like angels, and the life after the resurrection will not be a mere continuation of it. Neither shall they marry nor even give in marriage. He went ahead to explain, because it has several symbolic meaning. I'll touch on it briefly. Then he mentioned again that you are also ignorant of the power of God. Mm. God can give life to the dead. Therefore, before him, all who accepted him are alive. And God is not God of death, but God of the living. Mm -hmm. These are all teachings that Jesus gave after giving a clear position to return to the governor, the tax that belongs to the governor, yeah. and also to return to God what belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And also pointing significantly in their daily lifestyle things that reflect Christ, mm -hmm. eschewing the early practices to the godly practices. The early practices with which this mortal body will corrupt, but the heavenly, you know, body that this mortal body will turn to an immortality, with God granting us the opportunity of salvation. Now, there is one thing that we also need to uh, reflect on as a sincere Christian, where at any point in time we must reflect on what the Bible teaches. Right. You remember that all the responses from Jesus was all backed by scripture. Sure. Assuming the practices of humanity and then pointing them to the bigger picture of salvation. Mm. Yes, uh, Councillor Perfect. 
So on the pay, uh, giving Caesar what belongs to Caesar exactly. and what belongs to God to God, you see, they were trying to um, trap Jesus, as he was saying. Yes. If he says uh, pay to Caesar, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the people will be angry because they don't want to pay. Exactly. It's like um, Caesar is forcing them. You have mm -hmm. taken out of our land and our things that you are forcing us. Mm -hmm. So there will not be agreements with um, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And now if he tells the people also not to pay, then it means it's high treason. Mm -hmm. So Caesar is going to get hold of Jesus. Sure. So it's a wise thing that Jesus said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So as Christians, let's always pray that God should give us the wisdom to answer people rightly. Mm -hmm. And one thing we must know is most people use this quotation to say a lot of things exactly. but is this give to caesar what belongs to caesar is when it comes to god god is the first mm -hmm. you should give him due allegiance but things that you need to do for your country you need to do for your country but your country should not come it, it, supersede. Before, supersede that of your allegiance okay, to, to god, god. Mm -hmm. so if it contradicts the what god has asked you to do is supposed to be god but if it doesn't, you need to do your duty as a, a citizen. Example is you pay your tithe. So for the country to you need to pay what? Your tax. Mm. So if you're a Christian and you pay tithe, that is to God, and you are invading tax at the ports, you are doing other things, you are not a good citizen. Jesus is telling you that give to Caesar, your nation, what is due to him, and give to him, God, what is due to him also. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. And a lot of Christians are using, or a lot of people are using this to, to, to do things on their own, thinking that you can do good on, on, the, on the right, on, on, the, on the Sabbath or on Sunday that you go to church, you do good. And then on Monday or Tuesday, when you go to the market, you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And on, on Sunday or on Saturday, you give to <laughs> God what belongs to God. That is basically not what Jesus Christ was talking about about we should always remain faithful and holy to god because jesus said i am holy therefore you too be, be holy. holy in the next two minutes pastor i want you to touch on the greatest commandment jesus still teaching his disciples and taking them through what they need to know what did jesus teach his people about the greatest of all the commandments all right uh the Sadducees wanted to make Jesus look ridiculous. Mm. And indeed, they tried, and so he brought out that parable to ridicule the Pharisees. And you know the Sadducees and the Pharisees were opposites. Sure. Yeah. They never agree on issues. On so issues, yeah. Christ would always have to use this advantage. Even though he is God, we, he has given us wisdom. God's wisdom he has given, we must use it very, very well. At the end of the day, Christ had to refer to them that they are they were ignorant. Mm. And so if you are ignorant of something, you need to humble yourself to learn. And that is where we come to that greatest commandment. Because a scribe was standing there, listening to the argument, listening to how things are unfolding. And it's quite uh, something that you will find a scribe standing there to listen to your argument. And when this guy was listening, he was so captivated that at the end of the day, he came in. But his was to dialogue, but not to ridicule or question Jesus Christ for questioning sake like the Sadducees mm -hmm. and the Pharisees were doing. And when he came in with a dialogue and Christ explained to him, Christ told him that the greatest commandment plus, uh, plus an additional one mm -hmm. is very, very important. What is the greatest commandment? The Lord your God is one. Mm -hmm. And if the Lord your God is one, then love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. What is the meaning of that? You take that from the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. It is there. Because the first commandment in the Ten Commandments or the Decalogue has to do with God. If you love God, you will not worship any idols. You will not make any graven images. You will not take the name of the Lord in vain. And you will remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy because it is the Lord's day which he has given unto us. So Christ summarized the Ten Commandments into two. Right. Then he ended up by saying that mm -hmm. love your neighbor as yourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself encompasses the six that are left because it is between man and man, which is horizontal. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, Christ saw in this man, the man took it up, the uh, uh, discussion, and summarized it and made his own conclusion by saying that if that is the case, then love answers it all. And if love answers it all, then we need to come to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Come to Jesus and he will bless you in every facet of your life. Come to Jesus and he will bless you. Controversies 
in Jerusalem. Jesus, so wise, used wonderful strategies to answer the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees. And Jesus bids us as Christians, as his followers, that we should also go out there and tell people about this Messiah, the coming King. He's going to come. In no time, Jesus will come. And you need to give your life to him. And so, my dear friend, if you don't know Christ, if you don't have a relationship with him today, I want to invite you to give your life to Christ. I want to invite you to worship him in truth and in sincerity. And because we know soon and very soon he's going to come. We want to end this discussion with a prayer from the pastor amongst us. Pastor Loas, bless us. Let us pray. Dear Father, we bless you because you are God. You love us. You have explained everything and you are giving everything to us. If there is someone who needs you even more to love you, please open his heart and enter so that we all will have salvation. May the one who is crying, shedding tears, O oh Lord, find in you a consolist so that at the end of the day, we all will be one in you. Prepare us for your soon return and bless our ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Same time next week, we'll come your way again. It is Hope Sabbath School and I've been your host, Pastor Isaac Opoku. God bless you.